am here today to do my March reading wrap up. I will admit, this month was a little bit. What? Hi guys, Lori here. I'm here today to do my March reading wrap up. I will admit, this month was a little bit challenging. And I don't know what it is. I think towards the end of this month, I just was reading like really long books. And that just has not been what I've wanted to read. But that's just like what I had to read or what I got picked out of my TBR cup. So I just was reading much longer books. And I think it just was giving me harder to focus. And I wasn't feeling like I was getting anywhere. Like I felt like I wasn't just not making much progress. So right now, this is Sunday. I have full another full week. So I hope to actually read a lot, a couple more smaller books. And I did not complete my time warp YA book club books, which kind of sucks, to be honest. Um, but I did finish reading the second um, Prospero Reading book. And I still need to read Air of Fire. I doubt I will finish it this week, but I might. But let's get into what I have tackled so far. This will definitely be a two, well, I'll film it in two parts. Um, so the first book that I wound up finishing in the month of March was The Art of Losing by Lizzie Mason. This was definitely my, one of my favorite books of the month. I really enjoyed this book. I found it to be super compelling. Basically follows this girl named Harley and her life changed when her boyfriend, um, and her sister wind up making out. Um, and that leads to her boyfriend driving Jock with her little sister. And her little sister goes into a coma. So most of this book is hardly dealing with the after effects of that. There is a new boy that is involved that is her next door neighbor. If you know anything about me, I love rekindled romances. It's just so fun. I really like this book. I gave this book five stars. I thought it was super compelling. Super interesting, super realistic. I like how it focused a lot on the sister relationships. And you also got to see past and present timelines, which I normally really like when I read. But I definitely really like this book. It definitely is a harder read, more like a Katie McGarry read. Um, but it just, it was a really, really fast paced read that I just was really, um, I was just really connected to. Like I just had to know what happened next. So I just actually read this one really, really fast. And I wound up giving this five stars. If you're looking for books like Katie McGarry, I would actually really recommend this book because it was just a really fun, not a fun read, but it was like an emotional read that just kept me wanting to turn the page. The second book that I wound up reading in the month of March was The Assassination of Bran Juan Spurge. I will attach a picture because I wound up gifting this book to one of the students that I work with. I heard about this book from Reagan's channel and she read it and she really enjoyed it and I really liked it. I thought it was really fun. Basically followed these this elf and goblin and they wind up being the historians of their, you know, their little country and they wind up meeting and it's just, it deals a lot with like politics, it deals a lot with like how the winners of a story always tell it to, you know, benefit them. But I really did like it. I love the illustrations. The illustrations really was a really good way to tell like who like that 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 thing like whoever wins they write the story that they want and I thought that was really interesting and it was a really like interesting way to tell that especially in this political climate and I think knowing that like you know you can't always read believe everything that you read because it may be biased I think it's something that kids should learn at a young age and I thought that this book had a really fun way of addressing that topic in a really informative way, but doing it in a way that like kids would not, would just like think, oh, this is goblins and elves, and then realize, oh, that actually happens in our real lives. So I really liked it. I gave it three and a half stars. I got that at BEA, I think, last year, and I found it to be a super um, engaging read, and I really like the illustrations, and I would definitely read more by that author duo in the future. The next book that I wound up reading um, was Arlo Finch and the Lake of the Moon, um, by John August. And this is kind of where, along with the last one, that these books were longer. Like, this one was, like, 368 pages. That book was 500 pages. Um, and then this book that I'm about to talk, like, almost, like, 400 pages. So these books just got really large, and I think it just affected my attention span. But this is the sequel to Arlo Finch and the, Arlo Finch and the Valley of the Fire. I, again, love the setting of this book, and I was really compelled. This was one that I just kept wanting to read. Um, and I loved the environment. I loved the dual timeline. The mystery was actually super compelling, and I felt like the end of this book... Just it wasn't as clearly done as I wanted it to be. But I really did like the setting. I thought the setting was super cool. 
I like the dynamics between the friends. I thought the new mystery was super interesting. Learning about the past was super interesting. So I definitely gave this like four stars. But I really, um, I, I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite book of the month, but I definitely did think it was a really solid sequel. And I'm super excited to read book three in this series in 2020. And then the last physical book that I finished reading is The Last Life of Prince Alistair by Alexandra Bracken. This book, I love The Dreadful Tales of Prospero Running when I read it last year. Um, I really liked it. And I think that this book, the problem that I have with this is that it is, as an arc, it is like 422 pages. So this is a really, really big book. It took me a while to finish reading this book. And I think I really was intrigued by the new world. I thought the character dynamics were interesting. It was just a lot of information that we got. And I wonder if I would have liked it a little bit better if I um, reread book one first. Because I, that was the plan, but I just didn't have enough time. Um, so I liked it. I wound up giving it three and a half stars. I thought it was... The, 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 the chapters end on cliffhangers, but I was always, like, a little bit confused about who they were, like, what was going on. So, the plot was just not as compelling for me as I wanted it to be. And I thought this book was a little bit extra long, and I think it just, it kept losing my focus. Um, but overall, I was happy with the conclusion. I liked the new setting that we got. I liked the new characters that we met. Um, I just wish it was a little bit shorter and a little bit more concise. And I forgot one book. And the other book that I wound up reading this month was Blood Leaf by Crystal Smith. Again, I don't have a copy of this book because I wound up giving it to someone in my cast of my show. Um, so yeah, but I actually, this was another book that I really liked. It was basically a goose girl retelling. It was about this girl who was supposed to be sent to another town because she was going to marry the prince. Um, and I I really did like that. I thought the magic system was really cool. This might have been one of my second favorite reads of the month. I just really liked it. It was super fast paced. And there was a lot of unexpected twists and turns that I was super compelled about. Um, I really liked the goose girl myth. And I would really want, consider reading more by this author in the future. And yeah, I just, I really like this book. I thought it was a very, I haven't read a fairy tale retelling in like a while. And I just really thought the world building was interesting. It reminded me a little bit of Rule um, by Ellen Goodat that I read a while ago. But I just really like the fairy. I just love the whole book. I was super compelled to keep reading. And I really liked the end. I thought it had a lot of unexpected twists and turns. Um, but yeah, so that's all the stuff that I finished reading so far. I will definitely update you probably Friday or Saturday with the rest of the stuff that I read. Right now I'm in the middle of reading You Owe Me a Murder by Elaine Cook. Um, but I am just started it so I don't want to give you guys my thoughts right now. But yeah, that's my thoughts right now on what I have been reading and what... It just it wasn't my best reading month. But hopefully the last week of this month I can like power through and read a little bit more. So I can meet my goal of reading six to seven books this month. Um, but yeah, I'll talk to you guys on Friday for another update. Bye. Hi guys, uh, Lori here. I'm here today to do... Hey guys, Lori here. I'm back. It is actually Saturday and I actually had a really good reading like week and I just stopped doing everything else but reading on my commutes and I stopped even listening to stuff which I fell really, really, really far behind on Air of Fire by Sarah J Moss but you know what? It happens. It just does happen. Um, but I actually got a lot of physical reading done, which was actually super exciting. So I did wind up finishing The Last Life of Prince Alistair by Alexandra Bracken. This was another monster of a book. Very, very big. And I think that was half my problem with the books this month. I read, chose really, really big books. And I just wasn't mentally there. I think I was really distracted when I was reading them. And I just had a hard time focusing. Um, but this book was okay. I definitely preferred the first book a little bit more to this series. But I did like the transition of the world. I liked going down into the demon realm. I thought it was really, really compelling. It wasn't my favorite, but I definitely did like the story and I liked, did like the sequel. I just liked book one a little bit better. So my overall rating for this was three and a half stars and I'm definitely excited to see what Alexandra Bracken writes next. The next book I wound up picking up was a much shorter read and this kind of started my adventuring into reading or quicker reads and this is You Owe Me a Murder by Elaine Cook and I had read an Elaine Cook book previously and that was with Malice and I really didn't like that book 
Um, but this book I actually really like wind up enjoying. I gave it four stars. Basically follows this girl Kim and she winds up going on an adventure to England and I've been to England. Um, and before she goes to England, her boyfriend winds up breaking up with her. Um, and on this trip, she winds up meeting this girl and they wind up having like a conversation about, oh, what, what, what would we do if we killed this person in our lives that was giving us the most stress? And for Kim, it was her boyfriend and for this girl named Nikki, it was her mom. And it just set in life this crazy, crazy situation. And basically when her boyfriend is murdered, it is revealed that Nikki committed that murder and now um, Kim has to commit a murder for her. And it's just so compelling. I was a psych major in undergrad and I love psychological mysteries. This book was super compelling. The ending is definitely open. So I'll say that going in, I really wound up enjoying it. Um, and there was a love interest that I actually really liked. Um, but yeah, it was just a really, really I, gave, I wound up giving it four stars. This is my second copy, so I might wind up doing a giveaway later in April. Um, but yeah, I actually really liked it. If you like, you know, compelling psychological mysteries, which have somewhat of an open ending, I'd recommend it. If you did like With Malice, it's kind of in the same vein, but I just think the story was a little bit stronger. And I definitely like the main character a lot more. The next book that I wound up reading was definitely my favorite contemporary. Um, and that is Fame, Fate, and the First Kiss by Casey West. I love Casey West's novels. And this is actually book two to the companion series to Love Life in the List. So if you read that book, I really like that book. I read that book last year and I loved it. And this book follows Lacey, who is Abby's best friend. Um, and Lacey's an actress. She just got cast in a booked movie adaptation. And it follows her life in that she moves to California. She has a really cute boy that's a tutor. There's a lot of tiebacks to Love Life in the list. And I loved it. I know, I know some of the people that I follow really didn't like it. But I'm a sucker for movies set on TV and movie sets. It was super simplistic, but I was felt myself flying through it. There was elements of romance, but also hints of mystery. And I just really liked it. I gave this book like four and a half stars. Super excited. And I cannot wait to see what who book three focuses on. And the book that I finished this morning was Love and Gelato, Gelato by Jenna Evans Welsh. I wound up giving this book like four and a half stars as well. Really love this. Last year, I wound up reading Love and Luck, and I really like this. And this is Lena's story. That one was Addie's story. This one takes place in Italy. That one took place in Ireland. And I really like this book. This book is, again, has one of my favorite tropes of all time, the use of a diary that creates a, tool, a dual timeline. I love that trope. I love the boy in this. I love the girl. I love the mixed family dynamics. I love the elements of grief. It just was so fascinating, and I really enjoyed it. I literally started this book yesterday, and I finished it this morning because I could not put this book down. So, so, so well-crafted, and I really hope that she writes more in this adventure traveling series in the future. I have not picked up anything else, but I'm about to start Night Music um, by Jenna Marie Thorne because I'm going to a book signing tomorrow with her, um, and yeah. So I actually did definitely improve my reading stats towards the end of this month. That's super exciting and I'm super proud of myself. Um, when you check out my April TBR, some of these books did get read, but don't worry. I always have more to read. And I will talk to you next month for another wrap-up. Bye, guys.